If you have been under a lot of stress, completely overwhelmed, overworked, feeling fatigued, and now having difficulty concentrating with things like brain fog and even difficulty sleeping, then you might be in the burnout stage. So let's talk about how to actually recover. Let's dive in. It's one thing to recognize when you're in a state of burnout or deep overwhelm from chronic stress, it's an entirely different thing to begin to pull yourself out of it. So let's talk about a few of the main principles that I use when working with clients to help them recover from burnout. Now, the first thing you might need to do is to actually just be okay with resting. This can mean catching up with sleep, taking a nap if you feel the need to, or even just taking some time away from work or even some of your responsibilities with your family and friends. This can be difficult, but it's often really important to prioritize this. When you have been chronically stressed out, the physical demands on your body and mind can really take a toll. So it's important to take some time away to actually get some rest. And even more importantly, it's often really crucial to give yourself permission to do so. So many of us feel guilty when we take time to rest or we take time to do nothing. It can feel like you're being completely unproductive and sometimes you may beat yourself up for feeling this way. When you have been burned out for a while or when you're in that stage of burnout, it is important to actually take this time to rest and to not feel guilty about it. Really, do yourself a favor and be okay with resting. Again, this may look like taking time to sleep. It may look like doing things like reading a book. It may look like sitting on a beach somewhere and doing a whole lot of nothing. Whatever is restful to you and restorative to you, that's what you need to be doing. And of course, this can look different for everybody and that's okay. The next thing that becomes really important and it often goes along with rest is to really start to troubleshoot your sleep. Most people, when they are burned out, they're often very tired. And even though they're tired, they still have difficulty sleeping. It could be difficulty falling asleep or difficulty staying asleep, or it can look like being very, very groggy or tired in the morning when it's time to get up. This is where I go back to the basics of troubleshooting your sleep. So working on things like a sleep routine and also starting to focus on sleep hygiene. Now a sleep routine and sleep hygiene often go hand in hand, but it's all about prepping yourself, prepping your mind, prepping your body to prepare for sleep so that you can get your most restful sleep. I have an entire video about getting your best sleep or how to troubleshoot your sleep, and I will leave it linked down in the description box below so you can check that out. But generally aiming for anywhere between six and eight hours a night is generally what we need for most adults. Now everybody's going to be a little bit different here and there but the biggest thing is feeling like you're rested when you wake up in the morning and actually sleeping through the night and cycling through all the phases of sleep especially that deep sleep portion. In that phase is where we are repairing our brains, we're repairing our body, your body is producing all types of hormones, things like growth hormone, all the things that are gonna actually help you recover from a stressful time. So prioritizing your sleep is crucial. Another area where I like to focus on is your nutrition and your digestion to some extent as well. When we are stressed out, it's very easy to rely on eating a lot of processed foods, eating out all the time, and craving a bunch of sugar and even alcohol. So one of the things that I recommend is going back to the basics, simple, easy to prepare, well-balanced meals where you're meeting your macro goals. So having a protein, your carbohydrate, and your fats. And really not overcomplicating it any more than that. Because when you're recovering from burnout, the last thing you need to do is be worried about making a gourmet meal or a overcomplicated recipe. No, what I want you to do is really just focus on getting your basic needs met, especially things like your protein and your healthy fats. That is also going to help your brain. It's going to help your body physically recover from the burnout. And it's going to eventually help you to become more active as well. When looking at your nutrition after burnout or after a stressful time, one thing you may need to do is to repair the gut lining. For many people, things like chronic stress can actually start to damage our intestinal barrier. This can lead to the common thing known as leaky gut and can make our digestion more difficult. So repairing that healthy barrier becomes very important. Again, I have a video all about this and I will leave a link down in the description box. Another principle is looking at your exercise. Now, I know it sounds kind of crazy to think about exercise when you're trying to recover, but how you exercise and when you exercise and the intensity of that exercise becomes very important. It is totally important to still get up and move your body. A lot of times when we're depressed or burned out, we start to have actually more pain. And usually we're sitting around and we're getting stiff. Our muscles are not being challenged. So starting to recover and starting to move around is very important. 
Now, when you're in this stage, I think more about things like walking, things like yoga, and even maybe starting some resistance training, but very mildly and probably only twice a week. Being able to move is important for your circulation. It's going to help with brain fog. It's going to help your mood, and it's probably going to help your body feel a little bit better. So starting to work back into being more active, even while recovering, is really important. Helping you navigate this and helping you figure out a schedule, helping you to become accountable and helping you figure out ways to incorporate this is all part of what I do as a health coach inside my coaching program, The Better Health Blueprint. So if you feel like you need some help with some of these things I've already talked about, then why don't you click on the link down in the description box? You can learn how to either consult with me or to work with me inside of my weekly coaching program. Another thing that you really need to think about and this is often overlooked, but that's your mentality. How are you thinking about this? How are you framing the situation? What thoughts are you thinking over and over? When it comes to dealing with things like stress, it is sometimes not possible to remove the stressor. So we have to become more resilient to stress or we have to reframe it in a way in which we are not in that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system mode or what I like to call living in survival. There are a number of ways to do this. A lot of it has to do with starting to think about what we have been thinking about becoming aware of your thoughts and creating almost a pattern interrupt when you realize those thoughts are not serving you or those thoughts are more negative or those thoughts are driving you further into being stressed or feeling anxious. This is where I love things like meditation. Meditation is one of those great ways to kind of pattern interrupt. It can help to push you into the parasympathetic nervous system. You can kind of circumvent the sympathetic nervous system and start to think more positively. You get to realize what you've been thinking and you get the opportunity to take a break and start to reprogram yourself to think about what you actually want to think about. (laughs) This helps with the feeling of stress and again, helps you to become more resilient to the stress. Another thing I like to think about is a dopamine detox. And again, it may not be possible to go full on into this mode because you may be so far down in the phase of burnout that it might not be possible to do all the things. You can start by simply cleaning up things like scrolling social media. You can set timers. You can set yourself alerts to limit your time. You can reduce your screen time. You can even do things like habit stacking, which I love from the book um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, I believe it is, where you can use certain triggers to help you add on a new habit. So instead of doing something like scrolling social media, you can put on instead a podcast that is helpful a podcast where you're learning something or a podcast that makes you feel uplifted. In this way, taking on new behaviors or new challenges becomes a little bit easier than just going cold turkey. And another important factor here is actually starting to schedule things into your schedule, making them a priority and actually putting time aside for them. When you start to put something into your calendar, you make it less likely that you can ignore it. Not only does it block off your time, but mentally you see it there. And again, that can act as a trigger. Now, some days it's not always going to line up and that's okay. Life happens and things get in the way. But if you do take the time to schedule it out, plan out your day, plan out your week, you are far more likely to be able to incorporate some of these activities. So things like, you know, making room for your nutrition, doing some exercise, scheduling that time to meditate, putting this in your schedule, making it a priority is going to take you a very long way into actually starting to recover from burnout. All right. I hope that this video is helpful and that you learned something. If you like this video, then why don't you check out this next one? All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.